In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Cold-Blooded Raptor build. This is a 100 level Claws build that focuses on the use of the Claws weapon. It deals very, very high damage per attack, as well as sets the Frostbite and Hemorrhage status effects. Originally, when I started making this build, I started out with daggers, but what I quickly found was that they tended to miss more often than I would like with their attacks on specific enemies. For whatever reason, their reach wasn't long enough. And Claws aren't much longer, but they do have a little bit more reach than them, and I did like their attack pattern a little bit more. So I switched over to Claws, and one thing I really like about Claws 2 over Daggers is that they all have native status effects on them. Um, three of them have bleeding on them, and one of them has poison. So you can supplement that with other status effects quite easily, which Daggers don't have. Weapons that attack very rapidly align themselves well to applying status effects, and it's really a shame that daggers or some daggers don't have bleeding on them or poison on them by default, because they attack so quickly it would help set up those status effects, which is one of the advantages of claws. Now the claws I chose for this build are the Bloodhound claws, and you can actually choose the Hook claws or Raptor talons for this build as well. We won't use Venomous Fang because it has poison instead of bleeding. But keep in mind that if you do choose the Hook Claws or Raptor Talons, your stat spread's going to be a little bit different because those scale primarily with Dexterity and Intelligence rather than Strength and Intelligence. So instead of the points that I have listed here in Strength, you would put those into Dexterity instead. So the way this build works is that I set the Cold Infusion on the Claws in order to gain the Frostbite effect when you're attacking as well as Bleed Buildup so that you can proc Frostbite and Hemorrhage simultaneously or one right after the other which staggers enemies and deals incredible damage. And this also makes your claws deal physical and magic damage as well, which will then scale off strength and intelligence unless you pick the other claws, which will then scale off of dexterity and intelligence primarily. So I sort of split my stats between strength and intelligence in order to get good physical damage and good magic damage, and then also to have those status effects. We don't focus on the status effects as much in this build. Like, it's not necessary to have those status effects. You're like, you're not trying to increase them, which is why we didn't go like a cult. Uh, or bleeding, or, you know, use some sort of, like, incantation, like, Blood Flame Blade in order to boost bleeding. We're not focusing as much on the stat effects as we are raw damage. And one of the ways we increase our damage is by putting Royal Knight's Resolve on our claws, and what's really cool about claws in general is they only count as one weapon. However, when you two-hand them, you get a claw in either hand, and when you buff with Determination or Royal Knight's Resolve, it actually ends up buffing both claws because it's only considered one weapon, which is phenomenal. This allows you to do an R1 attack while you're two-handing or a jump attack and deal substantial damage because you're effectively buffing both weapons with one buff, which is something that you can't do with any other weapon anymore since patch 1.03. So this is, you know, only applicable to weapons that are paired weapons, which apply to claws and fist weapons. So if you're playing a fist build, you could also use this on fists as well. This aligns with our philosophy with this build, which is increasing our damage as high as possible, not worrying about the auxiliary effects like bleed and frostbite in order to pump our damage as high as we can, so that when we buff with Royal Knight's Resolve, we're increasing that damage as much as possible. In that regard, you can actually play this as a quality build as well if you set the quality affinity on the weapon to get even more damage, so that when you buff with Royal Knight's Resolve, you'll actually increase your damage even more. However, I do find that the Frostbite status effect, in my opinion, outweighs the extra damage that you'd get from a quality build, but nonetheless, you still have that option if you would rather play with a quality build, and then you could just put points into strength and dexterity and not worry about intelligence. This would also allow you to use like a consumable like Exalted Flesh to buff your physical damage by 20% for 30 seconds, and you'd get more impact out of it because all of your damage would be physical. However, there are other advantages out of, you know, using intelligence with this build, which is that you can cast sorceries. If there are sorceries you like for this build that have range, like Loretta's Great Bow or something like that, you'll be able to cast those, and even though they're not going to do as much damage as they would do if you were a pure mage, it still gives you options for scenarios where range would make things a lot easier. Additionally, you could add something like the Horn Bow to this build and have a ranged option in a bow that scales off strength well, because when you two-hand, you get your strength bonus, and it also has intelligence scaling, although very poor one, but does magic damage as well, so it kind of fits nicely into this build, especially if you cast something like Terra Magica on the ground, which boosts magic damage by 35% for 30 seconds. So as far as a staff goes for this build, if you want to use magic, I would recommend the Academy Glintstone staff. You'll be able to meet the requirements for it, and it's pretty much the best staff you can use at these intelligence requirements. Another thing that I really like doing with this build is that I keep a Sacrificial Axe in my left hand so that when I kill enemies, I gain 4 FP back. And this applies to however you kill them. So if you use magic spells and kill them, you get 4 back. Or if you just kill them outright, you get 4 back. And this really helps with your FP consumption. And what's great about it is even when you're like two-handing your claw, so you put a claw in either hand, it's still counting you as carrying the sacrificial axe because it's technically in your left hand still, 
So you'll still get the benefit of that while you're attacking with your two hands claws. And that works really well for this build. And it also doesn't weigh a ton, so it doesn't add a lot to your equip load. It's like five or something like that, which isn't too bad. When it comes to armor for this build, I use the Heima Glenstone Crown in order to give me some strength and intelligence at the cost of a little FP. We don't really lose out too much FP here because we don't have a huge FP pool, so that gives me a little extra points in strength and intelligence, which is the exact stats we need for damage for this build. I also like to use the Raptor's Black Feathers. This increases your jump attack damage by 10%. You do a lot of jump attacks with this build, so increasing that damage is great. Other than that, the last two pieces are probably going to be something light in order to keep your equip load down. We don't have any points in endurance with this build, so you're not going to be able to wear very, very heavy armor. When it comes to talismans for this build, I use the Claw Talisman, the Wing Sword Insignia, Green Turtle Talisman, and Lord of Blood's Exultation. The Claw Talisman further increases your jump attack damage by 15%. As I mentioned, we do a lot of jump attacks. They usually finish enemies in one attack, so this is fantastic. The Winged Sword Insignia is there because you attack rapidly with both weapons at the same time, building up your attack power to get more and more damage. Green Turtle Talisman is there because you expend a lot of stamina when you're going to town with your claws and you need to regenerate it quickly in order to get back into the action. And Lord of Blood's Exultation is there because it increases your attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when you set the bleeding status effect on someone or yourself. In this case, it'll be someone else. So you're going to gain increased damage when you naturally attack enemies, which is good. There are other talismans you could use for this build, like the Ritual Sword Talisman, which increases your damage at max health by 10% if you want. It just depends on how confident you are at playing with that playstyle. It's very difficult, in my opinion, to stay at 100% health uh, all the time when playing a melee build, but that is nonetheless an option to increase your damage further. The Dragon Crest Shield Talisman is also not a bad one for this to increase your defenses further because you're wearing light armor. If you're someone who's really aggressive and likes to trade hits, this wouldn't be a bad choice for you either. Of the talismans that I selected, probably the one you would replace either with either of those two is probably the Winged Sword Insignia, because generally speaking, I find that enemies die long before I get that buff up, or in boss fights, it's hard to pull off long combos sometimes in order to get that buff up like completely. So the way this build works is normally that I'm just running around the landscape and I'll jump attack an enemy and that'll usually kill them in one hit, or it'll stagger them and then I'll go to town with R1 spamming with both my claws out and that will usually set bleed or frostbite on them, uh, or even both in rapid succession, and that'll usually finish off most enemies, even the tougher ones, just that one combo alone. What's really great about this build is that you don't have any buffing really, like we aren't using any faith buffs like Golden Vow or anything like that, although you could put Golden Vow on your Sacrificial Axe if you want, and then cast it for a little extra damage and protection when you're going into tough fights. You don't need to because your damage is very, very high. So if you're someone who doesn't like buffing constantly and you're tired of the buff meta of Elden Ring, this is a great build for you because you really don't have to. When it comes to spells, if you choose to use them for this build, though, you don't need to. Uh, some that I recommend are Great Glenstone Shard. This is a good moderate ranged uh, single target spell. That's just fantastic when you get into a situation where maybe you need to thin out some enemies before you run in. Magic Glint Blade is also a good alternative to that if you'd like something that can set a delay, so maybe you set the delay on it by casting it, then run in and it hits while you're attacking. That could also work out very well. Loretta's Greybow is a really good long-range option. There are scenarios in the game where killing something before it ever aggros onto you is ideal, you know, to make things easier. So it's there if you need it as well. Greyblade Phalanx is probably the one spell I do recommend using if you're going to use magic out of all of them because it has very good stagger damage and you can throw it up and it lasts for a long time, get set up for your, you know, to run in, and it'll hit about the same time as your attacks, which is great. And you can either use Carrion Greatsword or Adula's Moonblade in order to have an AoE option. You don't really have much AoE with this build, so that's good for scenarios where you get surrounded. For stats for this build, I have 35 Vigor, 20 Mind, 10 Endurance, 40 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 40 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 9 Arcane. The 35 Vigor is there because you're going to get hit when you're playing a melee. You also have light armor, so it's going to hit pretty hard. I would like to get this up to 40, but there really aren't too many more stat points to be found. If you don't have points in Faith because you aren't a Confessor like I am for this build, which is not ideal, you'll probably be able to have more points into Vigor, which is great. 20 Mind is really there just to give you some FP in order to play around with when you're out on the landscape. Real Knight's Resolve costs 15 FP, even though you do get 4 back from Sacrificial Axe when you kill an enemy. Usually, if you buff with Real Knight's Resolve and Jump Attack, you pretty much one-shot anything except really tough enemies. So that really only costs 11. So that's going to get you like 7 or 8 cast of that usually before you need to take a pot, which is not terrible. This will probably need to be increased as you approach 150 in order to make that more viable. 10 Endurance is there because we don't need Endurance for this build. We would It would be great to have more stamina for this build, but we can't really justify points here at this point. We may put some more points in Endurance as we approach 150 to get better armor and a little more stamina. But right now, our stat spread is kind of spread around, so there just isn't a lot of points for that. 
40 strength and 40 intelligence are there to increase your damage with the claws, uh, both physical and magic damage, intelligence increasing magic damage, and strength increasing the physical damage of the weapon. Um, and just to increase the damage of your spells if you're going to cast spells as well. 15 dexterity is really only there to meet the requirements for the claws. This is going to vary a little bit depending on what claws you use. And as I mentioned, if you use either of the other two claws, you're actually going to pull points out of strength and just meet the strength requirement, whatever those are. It's usually pretty low. And then put points into dexterity and intelligence instead. Again, 14 faith is only there because I have a confessor starting class here. This is not ideal. Ideally, you'd be playing this as like a prisoner build or is, you know, some other class that doesn't really have any points in faith. And arcane is also not necessary for this build. So just a couple things I want to mention before I wrap up this video. I tried testing the other claws versus the Bloodhound claws, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And the Raptor Talons specifically say they increase your jump attack damage. But in my testing, the damage is about the same for jump attacks. So if you're thinking, oh, Raptor Talons, you're doing a lot of jump attacks, that's going to increase your jump attack damage. I tested it, didn't really see much of a difference at all, so it's not necessary if you're going for a jump attack build. It's not going to increase your damage like way over what other claws will do. Another thing I want to mention is if you do decide to go with a quality setup of this build and go Strength, Dexterity instead of Intelligence and kind of just cut the spells out, I would recommend getting at least 10 Arcane in order to use Blood Flame Blade. Putting that on your claws is going to make your Bleed Bell up go a lot, lot faster. And lastly, if you're using the Flask of Wondrous Physique for this, I recommend using the one that increases your Stamina Regen. You definitely have Stamina, you know, issues with this build. You go through it very, very quickly. You want it to come back quickly so you can keep, like, dodging and rolling and attacking. And that's one that's good. And you can also put it on to, you know, increase your strength or increase your intelligence or in order to increase your magic damage. I found increasing magic damage and the stamina to be the best combo in terms of overall damage as well as getting that stamina back because stamina was really limiting my attacks. So you can do that, but you can mix magic with a strength or magic with intelligence as well to further increase damage. Stay tuned for more build videos. I think I'm going to do one more level 100 build, possibly a madness build since people seem to want that. I'm going to look into that. I don't know for sure. Otherwise, next week we're going to be getting into our 150 builds.